Hey guys, Chris, Gabby, and Lucky here. And as people that work professionally with all sorts of exotic wildlife from alligators, venomous snakes, sharks, all kinds of crazy stuff, the number one question that we get, other than getting bit, <laughs> yeah. other than that, the other number one question that we get over and over and over, whether it's through emails, DMs, things like that, how do I do what you're doing? How do I work with animals? What advice do you have for someone interested in working with wildlife? Yeah, so today we're gonna do a video uh, just talking about our personal experiences, how we got to where we are today, any advice that we have for people who want to get involved uh, with animals, um, yeah. A very common question people ask, what about education? What schooling do you need? What about college, things like that? So personally, I have a bachelor's degree in environmental studies from Florida International University. Now, I have used that degree to work on several projects, and that's what allows me to do a lot of the academic work that I do. But, in your case... Uh, I actually did not finish my degree. I did three years undergrad at SUNY Purchase for biology. Um, I took a year off to relocate to Florida. I'm sure, as a lot of you know, I'm actually from New York. Um, so yeah, I do not have a degree. I do plan on getting a degree, but just taking my time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and you know, that's, that's okay. And when people want to work with wildlife, the thing is, that's a huge, massive field to be able to deal in. And it really comes down to what do you want to do? Now, if you want to be traveling, doing genetic research on animals in another country, yeah, you kind of need a degree to do that. Yeah. But if you want to help save wildlife and be a wildlife rehabber, you don't need a degree to do that. And it really comes down to what is it you want to do. And I think the biggest problem is most people, they don't know what they want to do. They only know that they want to work with animals, but they have nothing past that. And you know what? Neither did I for a long time. I knew I wanted to work with wildlife. I had no idea in what capacity and I had no idea how I was going to do that. But the idea is that I did have this passion and a dream for it and I just did my best to try to make everything materialize and you take advantage of opportunities that come up. So don't become so fixated on the idea that this is how it's done. This is the path. A plus B equals career in wildlife. That's not how it works. Everyone's path is going to be different and everything is going to be different depending on your situation. Yeah. Yeah, and a lot of people ask, um, do I need a degree to work with animals? And the answer is no, you don't. Uh, and a lot of people put a lot of emphasis on the degree and don't have any animal experience. It doesn't matter if you're a straight A student uh, in college and you have perfect grades. If you don't know anything about animals, you're going to struggle in that field. The really important thing also is that the path is different for everybody. I know people who um, have gotten jobs working um, in like science fields and they don't have a degree. But I feel like without that degree, you're going to hit a point where you can't um, get there, There's higher. a ceiling. Yeah, yeah there, there's going to be a ceiling for that. And I just, I can't stress enough how important education really is. Now, how much of my college education do I apply to my job on a daily basis? Mostly none. None. Okay. But it's but, good to have as a backup plan or if anything comes along. Well, no, it's not just that. It's the experiences that I gained through going to college. Okay. If I never went to college, I would have never become involved in the work I do in the Amazon. If I never went to college, I would have never become involved in the work I've done in Costa Rica. If I never went to college, I probably wouldn't have done a lot of the film work that I've done because I wouldn't have been able to say, I'm a wildlife biologist. This is why you should listen to me. Yeah. It lends credence. It gives you a respectable name, okay? And that, that's really, really important. Now, a lot of what I learned in college, I'll be honest with you, complete waste of my time. A lot of the classes, complete waste of my time. But there were several that made a huge difference for me and there were several professors that made a massive difference in my life in helping to guide me and inspire me. And without that experience, without a doubt, I would not be where I am today. He's being so bad. He doesn't want to go back to school. He doesn't want to go on my shoulder. What? Hey, put him on me. My... No, it's okay. There we go. Um, and I think your experience is very different than mine because I can tell you as somebody who went to college in New York for biology, I don't think that there is a single class that helped me, really. Well when it comes to animals. Well, my counter argument there is that the classes that did matter to me, almost all of them were in my final year. Which I 
have never done made yet. to exactly yep. yeah yeah so almost every class that actually mattered to me in my career almost all of those we're at the very, very end. Yeah. Like literally the last two semesters were yeah. the ones that actually I, I think having a, a general, um, I just a general understanding of biology is important, you know, so you understand how like reptiles work oh, and mammals work and things like that. Absolutely. Um, I'm, well, I mean, we meet a lot of people that are like, oh, I want to work with animals. They literally, and I mean literally, don't even know the most basic principles yeah. of biology, who don't even understand what invasive means and don't understand what a reptile is, what an ectotherm, what an endotherm. They don't know, I mean, basic building blocks of biology. Yeah. And you can't expect to get anywhere working with animals if you can't tell me those things. Yeah, and, and that's the sad reality of it. And it's okay if you don't know those things, um, but it's really But don't expect to work with animals. Exactly, you, you have <laughs> to educate yourself. You have to do a lot of research, a lot of uh, reading, and just educating on your own. You, you can't expect it to be handed to you, you know? Well, that's the other thing too, it's just because you have a degree also does not mean you're gonna be successful in the animal field. This Absolutely. is very, very important. I would say that like, over 90% of what I use in my actual career is self-taught. I yeah. did not learn in college. I did not learn in a class. I learned from studying on my own. I have a huge bookshelf over there full of books that I have read. And that's what you have to do. You have to get out on your own and engage and educate yourself. So I've read tons of different books. And also, not, not only the books though, which is super important, very, very important. But not only is it about reading those topics on your own, but it's also about real world experience. And we're gonna really hit on that heavy. But what I also mean by that, I spent countless hours just out in the field, just observing wildlife, observing yeah. animals, and learning about animals, and then trying to figure out their behavior and things like that. And that's a huge part of my animal education is just spending time with animals and learning about them in a non-structured way. So along the lines of education, another thing people often ask is what major should I take? So my major was a bachelor's of science in environmental studies, but realistically for most jobs, any sort of biological studies bachelor degree should be good enough for, for most basic level. Now, you gotta think about your career, you gotta think about what you really wanna do and what your end goal is. If you just wanna be able to work with wildlife, most places will accept any sort of biological studies major, whether that's biology, environmental, zoology, any of these kind uh, of things. Genetics, even chemistry. Yeah. Even chemistry. Yeah. yeah. Well, again, any, any kind of, you know, science degree will be accepted for most jobs. Now, for me, I'm horrible at math. Like horrible, get math anxiety, I freak out, I just can't do it. And at first I was a biology degree and I changed to environmental because there was less of a stress on math because the biology track was really tailored for pre-med. And so it was very heavy on organic chemistry and a lot of harder math, things like that, that I just, I freak out, I can't do. So that's why I changed mine over to environmental to get away from that sort of thing. Now at the time, that was a huge decision and I was freaking out and I thought I was gonna ruin my life if I didn't do exact the right degree. And I know that's where a lot of people are at. And that's where I just like to tell everybody, you know, for most jobs, as long as you have a degree, um, they're gonna accept it as long as it's in the biological sciences, you know? And the other thing too is that a degree not only is showing your education in that field, it's also showing your dedication and your discipline and your ability to follow through on a plan and not bail. Yeah. And that's incredibly, incredibly important for an employer to know. Yeah. Um, I think that I was talking to um, one of my friends and she was saying that uh, somebody that's really hype in FWC right now has like an English degree. But because they had a degree and so much experience, they were able to get that position. So sometimes even if you just have some kind of degree, as long as you have experience to back it up, it really doesn't matter what degree you have. It's just about having that piece of paper. Yeah. And I mean, it's having that piece of paper to be taken seriously. Yeah. Because the other thing too is that you're going to be in, most likely, you're going to be applying and the competition you're going to have, most of them will have a degree too, you know? And so I know... Even if I was hiring people to be an alligator wrestler, you don't need any degree whatsoever. But if I had one guy that had a degree, and let's say they had the same amount of experience, okay, and the only difference is one had a degree and one didn't, I'm gonna go with the guy that had a degree. I mean, it shows discipline. Even if it has nothing to do with what we're doing, it does show you have discipline. Yeah, that's very true.
So now that we covered the whole like a uh, degree education thing, we're going to talk about something else that's very, very important, which is volunteering. Yeah. Hands-on experience. Do not underestimate the, the importance of hands-on experience. And the only way you're going to get that is if you work for free. You're gonna have to work for free for a while. I did it for six years and I still volunteer. And you've volunteered as well, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. absolutely. Personally, I started when I was 15 volunteering at one of my um, local nature centers, just educating people, doing birthday parties, things like that. We had like snakes, we had um, a couple of like little owls that I wasn't allowed to handle at that point. Um, we had guinea pigs, uh, chinchillas, ferrets. I'm trying to think of what else, a couple of lizards. Um, so I started off very, very, and goats. So I started off very, very small. And I did that for, I wanna say about two to three years. Then after that, I spent a summer volunteering at um, an aquarium, which was actually 45 minutes away. And God bless my mother, she drove me every single day to go volunteer there for the day. Um, so that was really cool. And that was completely different from the nature center. So now I have small mammals and now I have experience with marine life. So then from there, I started volunteering at an animal hospital where I started volunteering with cats, dogs, but also exotics uh, and exotic medicine. Um, and I worked my way up to be able to give like medicine and sub-Q fluids and things like that. Um, and eventually, since I was volunteering for so long, they actually offered me a job. I got yeah. a position doing that with no degree. That's how because, I got my first job. Yeah. And then from there, I started volunteering at a, um, a, a, uh, a raptor rehabilitation center. So we would like get injured owls and hawks and things like that and like rehab them and then release them. So that just covered a bunch of, you know, different animals. And it's really important to have experience just with everything. And you know, um, I had a friend once that said to me, word for word, you're just going to be a person that knows a little bit about a lot. And then you explained it to me really well when things go bad, what kind of animal does better? Specialist or generalist? Yeah. And that's that's the, the perfect way to... The biological concept absolutely. right there. You know, in a stable environment, a specialist can be extremely successful. Guess what? This is not a stable environment. <laughs> you need to be a generalist. Absolutely. You need to know a lot about a lot. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's better to be able to be able to work multiple different facets of a job than be the best at one specific thing and then horrible at everything else. Yeah, and it's good. I mean, I would say that my specialty is reptiles. I yeah. would definitely say that that's my specialty, but I also work with birds. I can do small mammals. I have primate experience. Um, I have large predator experience. I have a little bit of big cat experience. So yeah. it's good to have a little bit of everything. Absolutely. Yeah. And an another big point about volunteering is you got to pay your dues. A lot of people think that like, oh, I want to work with alligators. So I'm just going to walk in one day and say, hey, I want to work with alligators. And they're just going to let me walk in and work with alligators. No, no, that's not how that works at all. Yeah. No one's going to let you do that. For one, these are dangerous animals. And you need to be able to show that you've worked with other animals first. You have to work yourself up that ladder. You can't expect to walk in like, hey, I'm going to be the CEO. I heard that's open. Can I get that <laughs> job? Uh, no, you have zero experience working in anything. Why would we give you yeah. a top tier job? Yeah, an animal that can kill you. I mean, and a lot of people message us too. How can I work with alligators when I have zero experience? You can't. You can't. Period. You can't. No. You just, you have to start off with um, rabbits, guinea pigs, small birds. You got to work slowly. And that brings us back to the point where everybody sees where we're at now and they think it just happened overnight. I mean, I've been working with animals for nine years. Well, I've been working and with alligators for over 16 years. Exactly, but people don't see that. They only see, you know, the pictures that we post now and the videos that we make now, and they don't understand like the blood, sweat, and tears that went into that. Yeah, yep. absolutely. Another big point is not only having experience to be able to show your ability to work with this animal, but also having experience to show you should be taken seriously and that you deserve this job. Yeah. Because I mean, let's just be honest here. If you think that you're going to be able to get a high pain or dangerous job or something special like that, just because you want it, that's not good enough. That's not, you know, and I, a lot of people want to work with animals and the sad reality is not everybody is going to be able to. It's a competitive it's field. It's a very competitive field, extremely competitive. You have to be the best that you can be. So a lot of people also message us and they're like, well, how do I get experience? Because where I live, there is nowhere. There's nowhere to work with animals. There's nowhere to um, get experience. And honestly, I kind of find that a little bit hard to believe because I feel like you can find something, even if it's an animal shelter, animal shelters are everywhere, uh, a nature center, 
Um, what else? I mean, any place, even a, a classroom, honestly, if they have a, a guinea pig or a hamster, go volunteer. A pet to take, store? Yeah, a pet store. I mean, literally anything. To get um, started. Obviously, yeah. that's not your career. But just to get started Absolutely. at a young age. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, I'm from New York. There are no exotic animals in New York, like especially uh, compared to Florida. I mean, we have nothing there. And even you, you had to move too, right? Yeah. Well, I feel like a lot of people are, they're self-limiting. They're like, well, yeah. there's nothing around, so I guess I'm never going to do it. Yeah. Okay, then move. This is your life. You have to own it and you have to take charge of your life. Where Gabby grew up, she didn't have an opportunity. She moved to Florida, packed up her whole life. Yeah. For me, same thing. Where I grew up in Central Florida, there were not the opportunities I wanted. Packed up my whole life, moved to South Florida. You have to chase and pursue what you want to get. Yeah, and the reason that I've been so successful in Florida in such a short period of time is because of my experience and all of it is volunteer. I mean, there was a point when I was living in New York um, where I was driving an hour north three times a week and then an hour south three times a week just to volunteer with different animals. I would drive an hour north to work with birds and I would drive an hour south to do um, animal presentations at, and schools and things like that, working with like porcupines and like big birds and, and things like that. So it, it, you really have to, to work hard if you want it, you're gonna make it happen. That, that's really what it is. Well, yeah, I mean. And I hear a lot of excuses. And yeah. I, Honestly, I don't have patience for excuses because I did it and I worked seven days a week and volunteered and went to college all on top of it because I wanted it. I, well, I literally just had a Facebook memory thing come up yeah. yesterday and it sh and my Facebook memory was me saying, oh, well, I have to work at the alligator farm doing gator wrestling shows today. Tomorrow I have to do gator wrestling shows at the other park and then the day after that are my final exams. Yeah. And so I would do full-time student and work two gator jobs at the same time. And then at another time, I was doing venomous snake shows and gator wrestling shows and full-time student. For those who follow me on Instagram, I posted something today about this video that we were going to be doing and asked you guys um, to give me questions that you want us to cover. So let's see, I have a few. Um, so how do I get a job like yours with no background? <laughs> you don't. You don't, sorry. sorry. Uh, we kind of already covered that, but. You gotta put the time in, gotta put the work gotta in. Put the time you gotta in. earn this. Yeah. Um, so online college, is it just as credible? A degree is a degree. I mean... Yeah, but, but online courses, as far as getting the piece of paper you need, yes. Yeah. As far as getting the experience, absolutely not. You know, I yeah. mean, again, one of the most beneficial things for me in college, I went to Peru. I went to Costa Rica. I got to work in field sites in the Everglades. I got all this experience by being in college. And I would definitely try to take advantage um, because a lot of college courses offer like um, out of the country or out of the state, different projects, working with animals and things like that. And it counts for credits. So definitely try to take advantage of that. Yeah, yeah, study abroad programs but are there, there's, huge. But there's nothing wrong with getting an online degree though, especially taking few classes online because that's probably what I'm gonna do in the future in well, order to get So, I mean, degree. that's what I would recommend. Yeah. Take some classes online, yes, but do not get your whole degree online. Well, let's do a few others. Okay, so what kind of education, what program area of study, what level undergrad master's? Um, so yeah. Depends what of, you want to do. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I think a master's is great, but obviously not everybody's going to do that. That's a lot of work and like, yeah. I have so much respect for people that do that. That's not what I want to do. Yeah, I mean, I was going to go for my master's. I only have a bachelor's and I was, I wanted to go for, I mean, full doctorate, you know, yeah. and I still do. A part of me still does. But I also ended up not pursuing that path because I have so many opportunities going on right now. And yeah. I have so many life experiences and adventures going on right now that I would rather do that than pursue this. And I always think that if something falls apart in my life and I'm not able to continue the work that I'm doing right now, I'm going to go back to school. Like yeah. without a doubt. That's, that's my plan right now. I'm debating time off from college to get experience. Thoughts? I would say do both. That's what I did. You know, yeah. even if it's one day a week, three hours a week, that's it. Find time, you know, instead of maybe um, going out, hang out with your friends, spend that day volunteering. You know, I, I definitely think you can do both. Well, you're talking about going back to school right now. Yeah, and I was a full-time college student and had two jobs and still volunteered. Not that I'm recommending that because like I said, that was just awful, but I did it because I wanted it. And it's, it really depends on how bad you want it. And that's, I feel like that separates the people that are successful with animals versus not, you know, if you're determined to do it, you're going to find a way to do it. So my, my suggestion, my advice would 
be to do both and just try to make it work. That would be my advice. Okay. Tips for starting later in life, post-college, kids, full-time full day job. job. Yeah. That's, that's, that's very hard. difficult. Yeah, it is. Yeah, that's you know? very difficult. But I mean, again, going back to the volunteering aspect, if you have a lot going on in your life that prevents you from being able to dedicate most of your life to working in this kind of field, volunteer. volunteer. And that way you can have your foot in the door and you can gain experience and be able to follow your passion working at a place without having the responsibilities that an actual job at that place would require. Yeah. Um, and a lot of my experience has been uh, a lot of younger kids like in their 20s or teenagers or maybe in like their 30s um, but I recently started volunteering a couple months ago at the Iowa Life Center um, and there's a lot of older people 50s 60s uh, and maybe even older and that doesn't necessarily mean working hands-on with animals a lot of them do meal prep or a lot of them help with laundry or cleaning cages and that's all working with animals and that's all very important too so um, that, I mean, again, that's a hard thing if you're a mom with a full-time job and kids, but if you can find one day to volunteer three hours, four hours, that, that would be my advice. Yeah. 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 Expectations versus reality. <laughs> yeah, we kind of touched upon that a little bit. So yeah, expectations. If you go on Instagram and look at all these like animal influencers that just post pictures of like tigers and monkeys and zebras and... Well, you know what a lot of that is, is someone else that dedicated their life to working with wildlife and learning how to work with that animal. And then somebody, somebody goes to somebody, a facility and takes pictures with it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I see a ton of that where it's like, this person has never worked with that animal day in their life. And they're yeah. going to post a photo with it. Like, Hey, I'm an animal expert. Look at this thing. What's really funny too, is when people ask like, Oh, how long have you been working with it? What's its name? What's its favorite food? And they don't, don't have any answers. So they're like, uh, I don't know. I just met this zebra two months ago. So, or two, two minutes ago. So I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, unfortunately, a lot of people in this field use animals to elevate themselves and not working for conservation or yeah. education. And that's a big problem that we have is where people yeah. like, you know, hey, come here. Look, this is Lucky. <laughs> oh my God, Lucky makes me look so cool. Let me take selfies. I'm amazing. <laughs> I don't know anything about this bird, you yeah. know? And it's like that, unfortunately, where, you're, where your work is making yourself look cool using the animal instead of you working with an animal. And of course, you can look cool while doing it. Don't get me wrong. But the idea is conservation, education. Yeah. I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. Like everybody pretty makes mistakes. Pretty, pretty close. <laughs> We're not perfect. Everybody makes mistakes. But I know that I do try really hard, especially like on my Instagram, all my social media, social media platforms, to really promote um, like education and, and telling people how they can help from home and how they can get involved. It's not just Wikipedia. Wikipedia Inc. Is yeah. that a word? Well, I mean, a lot of people Wikipedia just cut and fact. paste Wikipedia and throw it on there. So try to portray yourself in a professional way. Yeah. You know, I, I feel like a lot of the attention seeking behavior you see will be rewarded on social media. You'll get it, a lot of followers from it, yeah. but you're not going not to be in real life. Yeah. And I, I feel like I try very hard to, um, to not post anything crazy with alligators, to not post, I don't even post tricks that I do with them really. I try to show them in a different light because people don't respect that and they see it and they're like, this girl is crazy. But if you're professional and you are well-spoken and you're educating people, they're like, okay, this girl works with dangerous animals, but she knows what she's talking about and she's educated. So, and I think we both really pride ourselves on being professionals uh, in the field and yeah. just, you know, trying to educate people the best we can and not just taking pictures of animals. I mean, you got to think about it this way. Would you hire you? You know, look at your social media, look through there and imagine you're the boss and you're running an animal park and you're looking at this guy and be like, yeah, that's not the kind of person I want representing my park. Yeah. And that's not the kind of person I want to trust with my animals, with the animals lives and with their own lives. If it's a dangerous animal. Best animals to start with. Kind of cover that a little bit. Well, so, start small. Yeah. You know, start small for sure. Uh, a lot of people want to work. They see what we're doing, and a lot of people are like, I want to work with alligators. Bro, 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 bro. Pump the brakes. Get a yeah. bearded dragon. Work with that first. Okay. That's how I. I had two bearded dragons. I had leopard geckos. I had crested geckos, chameleons, and that's where my passion for reptiles started. 
Um, and we both started before the social media age too. So we had to like figure it out um, for Honey, ourselves. Honey, I started really. before there were cell phones, okay? Oh my God, you're that old. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Um, so best animals to start off with, small animals. And I, I have a few people that have messaged me over and over and over. How do I work with alligators? And I keep telling them, don't limit yourself to just alligators. If you don't live in a place that has alligators, um, if you don't have a facility that allows you to work hands-on with alligators, if you don't have the experience, you can't work with alligators. And that's just a sad reality. Well, I feel like people that say things like that, those are people that want the alligator to make them look cool. I, I, I have to agree with that. Yeah, they're I not do. interested in the alligator. Okay? Yeah. If you're actually interested in the animal, you do your own research. Here's another huge one. People, how do I get this job? Can you get, can you tell me who I should talk to at that place? I'm like, I don't know what or that place I is. Or I live in this state. Can you find me a place to volunteer? And it's like, yeah, because I don't have enough things on my plate. Well, it's the idea, if you, you actually wanted, wanted to yeah. do this, you would figure it out. Absolutely. You would do some Googling. Absolutely. You would do your own research. I have no problem helping people. I get... I mean, literally, my DM is constantly 99 plus every single day. And I try to answer as many as I can. There's no way to keep up with them all. But a lot of the questions are so simply answered by just Googling the same thing you just sent me. Yeah. And if you don't put the time into that, why would I waste my time? I mean, sorry to be harsh. It's, it's the truth. But, though. you know, and it sounds mean. It really does. And I feel bad. But it's like, if you aren't even trying hard enough to Google something before asking, you obviously don't care about this topic yeah. enough. It, and I'm not gonna waste my time if you're not passionate. Yeah. And a lot of people are like, oh, I wanna work with this cool top predator and make myself look cool. And it's like, start small. Yeah, but that's not what I wanna do. Yeah, but that's gonna benefit you, I promise you. Yeah. A lot of the experience that I gain by working with non-dangerous wildlife directly applies to working with dangerous wildlife. And this made me think of something too. So I had multiple people, we volunteer at a facility in Homestead uh, and they just got, um, a couple months ago, they got lions that were donating to us, baby lions. When I posted those lion pictures, I can't tell you how many people messaged me asking if they can, can come volunteer. And I'm like, sure, you can come volunteer, but you're not going to be working with the lions. You're going to be making food. You're going to be making uh, dishes for the animals. You're going to be cleaning. You're going to be doing laundry. Like, oh, no, that's not what I want to do. Like, oh, so you want to come and just play with the lions? Like, you want to come and take selfies with animals and make you yourself have look cool without no doing business any work with yeah not how it works and, and we don't i don't tolerate that i know you don't either yeah we don't tolerate that we worked hard to be where we are today and we expect everybody else to do the same we're just trying to tell you the the harsh reality and, and things that you need to hear um so like takeaway points if you don't know how to handle a rabbit you're not going to be working with alligators um what else uh do your own homework, do yeah. your own research. Put you have effort. to try, yeah. you, you have to have discipline, dedication, you have to try, you have to work for things. If you actually want to accomplish something, mm -hmm. you gotta put the work in. Yeah, don't expect things overnight. Um, don't expect things to be handed to you. No. You know, and understand that there's no clear path. Don't yeah. become discouraged. That's, Absolutely. That's a huge one. Just understand that there is no correct way to get to this point. Yeah, you the know? journey is different for everybody, so. Uh, don't get discouraged. Um, we, I really hope we answered your questions. I hope this is uh, insightful for, for you guys because I know that a lot of you are asking us. So, um, yeah. I also hope it didn't scare too many people away. We, <laughs> we gave some harsh realities there. But, but, but it, it, you need to hear it. I mean, that's... Yeah, that's it's important to understand. And, uh, you know, one of the biggest takeaways from this conversation is to not become discouraged and to have discipline and dedication and try to follow through yeah. and to understand that everyone's path is different and to not become discouraged and you're like, yeah, but I'm not where that guy's at yet. Keep in mind, that guy's posting his best life on Instagram mm -hmm. and because you're not doing what he's doing, he's probably not doing what he thinks he's doing either. <laughs> okay, so just try to keep that in mind to not become discouraged and to really just try to stay focused, try to stay disciplined and working on your career and not everybody's path is the same. Let us know what you think of this video, guys. If you still have any questions, feel free to Google them. Does you know that mean? <laughs> well, leave it in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, leave it in the comments and we'll do our best to answer them. Uh, but yeah, we hope that that was helpful. Yeah, and check out our other videos, guys. Remember to uh, like, comment, subscribe, share, check everything out, and let us know what you think. Thanks.